The Vampire Bat from 1933 was a monster movie directed by Frank Strayer, and it starred Lionel Atwill, Melvin Douglas, and Faye Ray. And it's interesting is that this isn't part of like the universal monster catalog of films, even though it's from that time frame, and it really feels like a universal monster movie. There's just a lot of similarities. There's the vampire theme and mad scientist themes, but this was produced by a different studio. And it's still pretty good. I enjoyed this one. It's in the public domain as well. So after I do this review, I'm probably going to just upload my copy of the film. I think it's already on YouTube, but I'll put another one out there anyway. Anyhow, the film opens up, and we're in a little European town somewhere, and there's a night watchman, Kringen, played by George Stone. He's walking along, and he sees spooky bats. Ooh, well, that's a little foreshadowing. And we pan up to a window where we hear a woman scream. Now, the next day, we meet with the Burgermeister, Gustav Schoen, played by Lionel Belmore. By the way, side note, Burgermeister means a chief magistrate or executive of a city or a town, not, as I once thought, an expert of hamburgers. Well, he's concerned about people being killed, and the bodies are found drained of blood and so on. And, of course... He's convinced, as we all would be, that it's vampires. But the character Carl Brettschneider is there, and he is not convinced, and he's making jokes. Carl is played by Melvin Douglas, who's a fun actor. I caught him recently in the film The Old Dark House. Well, Council seems to be convinced that it's vampires. All of them except for Carl, and he just doesn't seem to be alarmed, and he just kind of takes it as a joke. Well, he leaves... And he goes off to this big spooky lab to visit with his sweetie, who's played by the lovely Faye Ray. The character is Ruth. And they spend some time together. And there's a nice little romance between the two of them in this film. Meanwhile, we cut back to town and we're introduced to the character of Dr. Otto von Neiman, who's played by Lionel Atwill. And he's been a staple of a lot of these old creepy films I've been watching lately. I think he's a great actor. He's got this kind of creepy stare. He's either staring off into the distance or staring at the camera. But I think he's great. So he's in town visiting with a sick older woman. And while he's there, we are introduced to the character Herman, who is this crazy over-the-top guy played by Dwight Fry. And yes, it's the same actor who was the creepy guy from Dracula and Frankenstein. Well, here he is in this movie as well, so it's great. And he's there, he brings the old woman a flower, and he's clearly a little bit off, but I don't think he's evil. It's more like his character is kind of like a, a mentally ill man, and everybody in the village kind of understands this. Well, he is a little bit weird, and he scampers off, opens a window, and he reveals that he's also very fond of bats. Well, the doctor finds this odd, and also, well, the townspeople are a little bit suspicious as well, especially during this scene where Herman goes climbing a pole to retrieve a bat that he keeps as a pet in his jacket. Mm, that's kind of suspicious there, Herman. Well, that night, we have another death. This older woman dies, is killed by a mysterious figure, and again, next day, they find her body. Hmm. Dr. Neiman and Carl... Both go to investigate the next day, and sure enough, there are those telltale puncture marks on the neck. Now, the locals have gathered. They're starting to grow in their suspicion, and they don't take any action just yet, but the paranoia continues to grow. Well, the next day, character Ruth is in the garden when Carl shows up, you know, for a little bit of romantic sugar, but soon they're interrupted by Aunt Gussie, who's played by Maud Eburn. Hope I'm saying these names right. Well, she's there kind of as the comic relief of the film. And, you know, it's kind of some cute scenes with her. And she's always lamenting her health and her heart and so on using really big medical terms. Well, Carl and Ruth sneak away as this Aunt Gussie stops for a snack. But then that Herman character sneaks in. And he's off like in the bushes and he makes this bizarre cat meowing noise which lures away Aunt Gussie while he sneaks in and grabs some fruit from the table. So you think it's going to be something creepy, but no, he just wants an apple. Well, she sees him, and he's a little bit alarmed, but then Herman gets a little bit weird, and he has a cut on his hand, and he starts drinking blood from it. Mm, yeah, not a good move there, Herman. Well, another body is found, and the villagers are really starting to get convinced 
that it's Herman. They go to talk to Dr. Neiman about it, and, you know, Dr. Neiman is the scientific mind. He doesn't agree. Well, shortly after, they form a mob, and they chase after poor old Herman. They chase him through a cave. The cave kind of leads near a ravine, and Herman screams and jumps to his death. And the villagers are just like, huh. You know, I think they actually say, well, that settles him. Or does it? Soon we see the character Emil, who's played by Robert Frazier. He's on the move at night. And he's creeping up to another sleeping old woman and brings her into Dr. Neiman's lab where she's hooked up to this weird blood draining thing and all of her blood is removed so that Dr. Neiman can do this strange mad scientist stuff, including growing this pulsating organ or something. It's really kind of weird. Well, the body is returned to her room in secret you know, with the puncture marks on the neck, so people will still think it's a vampire. And later, her body is discovered by Aunt Gussie, who, of course, faints. Dr. Neiman and Carl are there to investigate this mysterious situation. Carl steps into full detective mode to figure things out, and Dr. Neiman just does a lot of staring. But he urges Carl to get some rest, and Carl calls it a night, goes to his room, has a smoke before bed, but outside on the roof, we see the character Emil, who is creeping around. He is waiting for, apparently, some sort of a telepathic command from Dr. Neiman. What is going on here? Well, will they kill Carl? Will the sinister Dr. Neiman get away with his creepy mad scientist schemes? Well, you got to watch the film for yourself and see how things unfold. So, so some quick closing thoughts. I think of movies from the 1930s, and I generally think of the universal classic monster films that are really, you know, in my mind, the king of that era. Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, The Invisible Man, and so on. Well, that's universal. Warner Brothers had a couple horror films in the 30s. I've reviewed a couple of them here, like Dr. X and Mystery of the Wax Museum. Well, this film, The Vampire Bat, was produced by Majestic Pictures. I think it's a lesser known studio, but they still managed to create an entertaining film just the same. And there's definitely some universal monster elements going on here. You know, namely vampires and mad scientists and quite a few familiar faces on the way, especially Dwight Fry, who it was great to see him here again as the playing the crazy guy. Lionel Atwill, of course, is great as the stern scientist character with that mad scientist vibe who spends a great deal of the film just staring off mysteriously with that eerie gaze. Now, Melvin Douglas, I thought was very colorful as the leading man. He's somebody that you believe in, and he seems kind of skeptical of the vampire stuff. And I thought that his romance with Fay Ray was sweet. Although this film, it's so brief, it didn't really seem like you saw much of their relationship. I think the film is honestly only 59 minutes long. And of course, yeah, Dwight Fry is Herman. is completely over the top and loopy. Not much different than his Renfeld character of Dracula. The Vampire Bat was directed by Frank Strayer. It's in the public domain. It's an entertaining old monster film, and it's worth checking out.